In this lecture, we're going to talk about Aurora Global Database. So what is Aurora Global Database? With Aurora Global Database, you can have one primary region and up to five secondary regions. The primary is read-write, whereas the others are read-only. So you cannot do writes on the secondary regions. All the writes have to go to the primary region, but the reads can be spread throughout the globe. Why is it useful? What are the use cases for this Aurora Global Database? Let's say you have an application that is spanning all the regions in the globe, or multiple regions in the globe. And this Aurora Global Database can really be helpful. So it reduces application latencies by localizing. Let's say you have a lot of users in Southeast Asia. You can have a region there with the read replicas of Aurora Global Database residing in the actual Southeast Asian region. All the local connections will go to that region database for reads, which helps a lot in terms of latency. For global applications, this Aurora Global Database is really helpful. And also for DR purposes, a great solution because you have up to five secondary regions. And if we have a very, very critical application, it is very useful to have Aurora Global Database. In case something happens to one region, you have other regions available for failover and recovery. Also, one big advantage with this Aurora Global Database is that the replica lag between the regions is usually less than one second. So that is really good. Even with regions spanning throughout the globe, the replication lag is less and under a second usually, which means RPO is under a second usually. What about the recovery time? Let's say something happens to a primary region and you want to bring up one of the secondary regions as the primary, how much time does it take? The recovery time in case of a failure is usually less than one minute. That's really good. So the RTO is under a minute usually. So the RPO is under one second and the RTO is under one minute, which is really good. Before using this Aurora Global Cluster, you need to understand some gotchas. One of the big things is obviously the writes versus reads. This is not a master master across the region. There's only one master and the others are replicas in terms of writes. All the writes have to go through the primary region, but the reads can be spread out. So the other important thing is that you can have up to 15 to 16 replicas in each secondary region. Okay, if you have a lot of reads in one region, you can keep adding more replicas to scale to the reads. That's another advantage. But the key thing, an important thing you need to remember is that writes have to go through the primary region always. There's no cloning feature available for global database as of now. Basically, with Aurora, you have this cloning feature where you can just clone a database immediately. Let's say you have a production incident happening or a production performance degradation happening and you want to replicate the same scenario in test. In that instance, cloning can be a very handy tool. You can just clone the production database onto a test environment and try to simulate the load and identify the root cause. Fix it there and then apply the same to the production. Cloning is really helpful in that way. But unfortunately, this feature is not available for Aurora Global Cluster yet. Also, there is no backtrack feature. The backtrack feature is not available in Aurora Global Database yet. So the backtrack feature, somebody drops a table, you can backtrack and recover. That feature is not available, and also Aurora Serverless is not supported with Aurora Global yet. And there is no parallel query. 
There are some gotchas you need to remember before using Aurora Global Database. Creating via the console. How do you create Aurora Global Database? You can use the console or CLI. If you use the console, it's pretty much similar to how you create Aurora. The only thing is you have to choose the global option that is here in the database location. There's regional as well as global. So you have to choose the global option here. Apart from that, all the other settings that you do are similar to Aurora cluster settings. So once you add the primary region, you can add the other regions by selecting a global primary and then go to actions and then add a region. And then you can add the secondary region and keep adding the regions as you need. So adding regions is pretty intuitive and you have an add region button and you just keep adding secondary regions up to five secondary regions. So how do we do the same with CLI? With CLI, the first thing is we create an Aurora global database itself. There is no cluster associated with it. The first step is creating the Aurora global database. So you give AWS RDS create global cluster and then the primary region name and then the global cluster identifier. So this is the first command we will do. The second command is the primary DB instance for the primary cluster. So before, what we did is we created a global cluster, which is kind of a placeholder for the global database. And now we create the primary cluster and then the primary instance. We give the create DB cluster region primary region cluster identifier and all master user password engine. Whether you want Aurora, MySQL, or Postgres, then the global cluster identifier, and then we give the global database ID. This is the global database ID. From step one, we give the same in step two. Once that is done, we can create the primary instance for the primary cluster using the create DB instance. So that replication can begin. These are the steps involved in creating a global cluster. In the next lesson, I'm going to show you how to create a global cluster using the console. See you then.